Do these have a stopper in them? Nope. <laughs> you live a mile from I was going to say, did you ever go too far? No, no. Twice today. Twice today. You did. This is the one I learned on. I put a little fuel filter on it so in case I went too far, it would save me. <laughs> What's up, Yens guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, I have a very special event planned for you. Mrs. Fishing PA and myself drove up to the beautiful Pima Tuning Lake, which you guys can see directly behind me. And the object for today is we're gonna visit the Linesville Hatchery. So PA fishing boat with the Jared Sayers. I couldn't be more excited today. I am super pumped up about this because Jared was nice enough to ask me to come up. He's gonna give us the tour of the facility. He's gonna show us some of the process, some of the procedure, some of the tanks. We're gonna take a look at the grounds, see some brown trout, see some walleye fry. And really the main event for today is musky spawning. So I'm super excited. You guys know Jared loves this stuff. I'm super excited to get a sneak peek at musky spawning. So we're gonna see some muskies today. We're gonna to talk about spawning. We're gonna talk about the eggs. We're gonna see the process and we are going to get after it and see if we can learn something new. We're gonna drive the two miles down the road. We're gonna hit Linesville, meet up with Jared, see the grounds, grab some lunch, and then we are gonna come back and spawn some muskies. So let's get after it. I'm super pumped, let's go. All right guys, so we're here at the Linesville Hatchery just around Pima Tuning, and I have Jared Sayers here with me. Jared is from Fish and Boat. Jared, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Jared Sayers. I'm the manager here at the Lionsville State Fish Action. And we welcome Ryan and his wife up today to kind of see a little, little more in depth what we do spotting the muskies and how we collect them, a little bit about what we do with the eggs, how we take them out of the fish, how we incubate them. We show them around a little bit of the musky raceways. So hopefully I'll be able to show you guys some of that. So we just got done with the walleye spawn. We took about 70 million eggs this year. And uh, last, um, the past Monday was the first time we took muskie yet. So today will be our second muskie spawn. And then next week we'll do two more pieces of backups. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be done with the But most of our walleye eggs have been shipped out of the hatchery, but they're stuck in the hatch. So we'll go look at some baby walleyes and turn it around. My God! One million walleyes. That is one million walleyes. What? Oh my God! One million walleyes. Yep. These ones oh. will um, we'll keep them in the air until Monday, and then we're going to put a use a chemical in the water that'll put a mark on their ear bone, mark their otolith, so that we can put these in specific waters and see how they survive. Nice. We can measure how much they're contributing to the fishery and stuff, so we make sure we're putting. Them. From Putting up there, it looked in. like dirt in your tank. <laughs> <laughs> One million walleyes. <laughs> right there. I could, I could scoop this, and that would be more walleyes than I've caught in my entire life. <laughs> That's so awesome. Wow. Look at the, look at the sort. That's just like a... Yeah, they like to ball up. They just ball up. Yep. That's so awesome. Now, if we left them in here too long, your mouth parts form on day three, and then they'll start eating each other. But if we left them in here for like day seven and didn't feed them, they'd, they'd actually be long snake like things of walleye in here, with one with the tail, his mouth, and his tail, his tail, his tail, his tail, his tail, his tail, his tail. And they all swim together. <laughs> uh, Isn't that from a horror that's movie? All the <laughs> These are what the eggs look like right before they hatch. Um, all of them, they're all completely yellow when we first take them, but then the the yellow ones here are the ones that died. These are dead eggs that didn't get fertilized or whatever. And these okay. ones here are darker because actually the fry is in there. 
Oh, wow. Okay, so that makes sense. If you look sense. really, really close, you can actually see it. I don't want to like... <laughs> That's really wild. <laughs> That's so cool. And most of the other species, we have to go hatch in the jar and then we take them out and inventory them into a tank. The walleyes actually, when they hatch, they swim right up. They swim out the jar into that little trough. And down here, they're going to use PVC pipes to send them to whatever tank we want to. They just oh, swim right out. <laughs> they swim up the... Yep, they swim out the top here. They swim out the top. Yep. And then down... Wow, that's sweet. Okay, I didn't... I wasn't putting that together at all. It's like... <laughs> that's really cool, too. The jars <laughs> on the other side here, they're out the hatching. Oh, you can, you can they see them hatching. swimming up through. These jars were actually full this morning. Look like those ones over there. And that's how we have to They're swimming out the top and there's a trough. That's so cute. So once all of those get in here, this will be about 1.3 million this time. 1.3. Yeah, that's a that's that's cool stuff right there. This might be the coolest thing I've seen. Definitely this year. And yeah, these are all walleye. Yep. The part that I the part that I never think about is we go out and we'll catch, you know, 18, 19, 22 inch walleye. And it's like, okay, it's a 22 inch walleye, but you don't you don't think about where they started and how you know how small they are right now. Like that's Mm -hmm. Mostly inland lakes in Pennsylvania, this is where they came from, you know, mm -hmm. there's decent natural reproduction in the Allegheny River and the flowing waters, but yeah. inland lakes are virtually no natural reproduction, it, just, it came from here. Yeah. You said 99% are stocked fish in lakes. In, in the inland lakes, yep. Yeah. Crazy! Look at that baby! <laughs> About 300,000 there. 300,000. <laughs> you know, how nice and gold they are. And these ones will turn black like those other ones. Yeah, okay. these, are, these are walleye eggs here. That's how dark they get because of the fried roll inside. Ah, uh, okay. The musky right. eggs will turn that color too. Well, okay, okay. But these That's are only, cool. you know, five days old, four days old. Mm -hmm. um, they'll hatch at 14, 14 days. And how many fish, how many fish did you guys pull? Um, that was about 10 females. Okay. Exactly 10 females. Normally we would get more eggs in that out of 10 females, but um, it was right at the beginning of the spawning season, temperature was kind of older like that, and they just they didn't get as many eggs as they could have. Uh, I expect today to be better. Okay. So, I think, we have, I think we have about 15 females to do today. Most of them are going to be a big spot. You can see a lot of them. I'm pumped about that. Yeah, I'm pumped about Back in 2009, we started bringing in brown trout eggs from New York um, with the strict purpose of going into Lake Erie to create a near shore fishery because the brown trout don't go as deep as the steelhead and the lake trout do. Mm -hmm. So the boats can catch them in like 40 feet of water and not have to go out so far. Plus they come into the streams with the steelhead in the fall and the spring and just add some excitement for the anglers. Um, but after a few years of doing that, we don't like bringing things in from other states because every time you bring something in, you have a chance of introducing disease. Uh -huh. So we just started keeping the fish for year after year and developed our own brood stock here at the hatchery. Um, so now we have, we always have four generations of brown trout on station and every November we take our own eggs and we're totally self-sufficient now. Oh, that's really cool. that Lake Erie program. That's so these are the four-year-old females down here. Oh, wow. And they'll, they'll gain about another three pounds before it fall when we spawn them, so they're huge. And then when we're done, we're done spawning, we actually take these fish up to the Lake Erie tributaries and let them go for the steelhead anglers to catch. Kind of, I think it's one of the trout I think, you know, 
That's so cool. So you said these are the catfish. Yep. These, all these ponds here have catfish in them. Cool. And, uh, the barrels we use are just like a five gallon bucket. We put a, a piece of plywood over the front of it and then we cut a hole because channel catfish like to go in a cavern. You know, they'll, they'll dig a cavern in the bank. Um, so that's why some places they have natural reproduction, other places they don't because the bottom just not, won't stabilize for a cavern. They don't lay their eggs unless they're in something. So we cut a little circular hole on those barrels and they'll go into that and they'll lay their eggs in there. And the males yeah. actually stay behind to guard the nest, so we have to chase them out. And then <laughs> we, we get the eggs, we take them inside, and hatch nice. them in there, so we have to keep that the hatching percentage up. Okay, cool. We try to take on as much as we can because you know the, the more ways we can help the anglers, is the better, more valuable our hatchery is, the more valuable our jobs are. You know, but people don't know that if we don't tell them. You know, right, right, right. <laughs> it's amazing how many people that love fishing from walleyes and muskies that don't know what we do, you know, let alone uh, the rest of the public. I yeah. assumed that they all just naturally, what Happen. do you call it? Yeah. Occurred. Occurred. I had no <laughs> idea, like, all, you had to stock all the lakes. Right. I had no idea. I just thought they were naturally most places, reproducing. Most of the places like over in Minnesota and Wisconsin where they have not good natural reproduction, the lakes are kind of infertile. The water's real clear. Mm. So there's not a lot settling out every day. And walleyes and muskies, they just blow their eggs out on the bottom where they think there's good spawning habitat. But in Pennsylvania lakes, they're so fertile, there's so much organic matter in the water, it settles out and smothers the eggs every day. Oh. So they don't hatch very good. That's why in some of the river systems where there's flowing water, if they find a nice gravel bar to lay their eggs on, the water will keep them cleaned off a little bit and you'll get some decent hatching. But in the inland lakes, it's just, it's not really possible. Yeah. Things I that build a nest, like bluegills and largemouth bass, mm -hmm. They keep them fanned off with their tails. Right, right. You know, or perch. They lay their vegetate their mm -hmm. eggs up on vegetation. You know, but yeah. walleyes and muskies just blow them and swim away. That's why when you pull the weeds up, you have all the little eggs on there. I can't say I ever noticed. Yeah, I see that a lot. Yellow tape. I don't get all. So we're weed we're destroying natural <laughs> reproduction of the perch <laughs> by getting snagged, <laughs> catching more weeds than we catch fish. Yeah, right. <laughs> catching weeds, <laughs> which is. I'm not a fisherman, I'm a, I'm just into a catching weird. salad. So this will be all the right female muskies they caught today, and we'll bring back two males for each female they got. We'll see what they got. All right, so. that they, we didn't use anymore. I don't even know what they used to use them for. But we kind of rehabilitated them and used some concrete and formed them back up. And this gave us another 60,000 gallons of water of space to raise muskies in. And that was, you know, when we started doing that is what gave us the extra room to grow the muskies to reach that 10 inch size range by the fall. Nice. In the past, we were trying to do that in the hatch house. It just wouldn't work. Mm. You know, our densities, we couldn't get our densities fish per gallon under one fish per gallon and they just were too crowded they wouldn't eat as ferociously and they just didn't have the room to grow so we started moving them out here this was the real ticket for getting those oh, okay. 10 inch fish that started making a difference and that's what led when we saw how big of a difference the 10 inch fish made that's what led to the change to stock yearlings at 12 to 14 inches gotcha. so, nice 
I'm pretty excited about it. So right now there's 35,000 muskies in here that are right around that 10 inch average. 35,000. They don't, they don't grow very much over the winter, you know, so we just kind of maintain them in the cold water. And then this time of year as the water starts warming up, we'll start pounding the minnows to them. And uh, they stay on dry feed the whole time too, to keep them satisfied. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll just try to get a couple more inches on them and then just be stocked at the end of June. Okay, cool. 35,000? Yep, 35,000. Here the water's kind of stirred up. You know, there's not a lot of vegetation in the water and the ponds and the lakes that it's coming out of, so it's stirred up with all that organic matter that I was talking about that mm -hmm. settles out on the egg. Walk across here and go real slow, you'll sneak up on them, hide in those corners. Okay. I can see them over there. I'll let you go first with the camera. You see them hiding right behind those corners? Yeah, I can see them. This pole, you can see them real good. Oh, they're, they scatter. That's it. That's so awesome. Oh, wow. I can see a lot over there. There they go, down. <laughs> That's so cool, though. So these are, you said 10 inches. These fish are 10 yep. inches? Wow, I can see them all on the block, too. You didn't want to swim with the baby muskies this morning. <laughs> the rule of fish is if you fall in, you got to buy everybody donuts. <laughs> <laughs> You might need extra meals on this one. You got a nice belly. Nice belly. Uh, she's a beautiful. I love that pattern. I thought that always make. I'd make a nice tattoo down your arm, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> With the half sleeve. Yeah, she's stream of eggs down your arm. Double jump, right? So if you took 800, it'd be double 100 mil, right? one's ever showed you how to tell the difference between a male and a female um, if you look at the vents on a female the the front hole and the back hole are either about the same size or the, the hole closest to the anal fin is bigger on this one they're about the same size 
If you look at the male, we'll look at those in a second, the front hole is much bigger than the back. It almost looks, the bottom hole almost looks like a little key slot. So the whole thing looks like a, an old skeleton keyboard. So those are both, uh, they're yep. yes. And it's very, it's very consistent. So that's the male. You can see it's, oh, okay. the back hole is definitely a little smaller. Um, it, it almost looks like a little sick of old skeleton key here. And it, it, it's always 100% accurate. Okay, cool. have a stopper in them? Nope. <laughs> you have a mild <laughs> time. I was going to say, did you ever go too far? No, no. <laughs> Twice today. Twice today. You did. This is the one I learned on. I put a little fuel filter on it, so in case I went too far, it saved me. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the facility, seeing the processes and procedures, 
you know, not only from an outdoorsman standpoint as a fisherman, but really someone who loves the fish, loves the fishery, loves animals. You know, this is a really cool experience to be a part of. So again, very thankful, Jared. I appreciate, you know, you Thanks inviting us up. And uh, you guys really need to get up here and check out the hatchery if you can. Can they? Yep, absolutely. We're always open to the public seven days a week from 7.30 to 3 every day. Um, the only other thing I'd add is muskie fishermen get out there and buy those muskie permits. It's really, it's really going to help the program. The money will go to a good cause. The things you see at this hatchery, we're going to upgrade them and continually improve them. The money will go to a good cause. And it, more importantly, that will show support for the, the fisheries and the support the sport. So, you're going to have fun. Thank you for coming. All right, man. awesome. Thank you very much. All right, Yins guys. So we had a pretty epic time at the hatchery with Jared. We learned a lot. We had a lot of fun today. Really got to see some muskies, see that musky spawning process. Such a cool thing. And I'm very thankful that Jared invited us up and kind of gave us the behind the scenes snapshot of the hatchery and everything that goes on. I just wanted to mention a couple of things though about today. Jared had mentioned the importance of that musky permit. And I have to agree with Jared that, that that permit is critically important. And I think those of you that are serious about muskie fishing need to take some time, take a look at that, understand that permit, and invest that $12 towards the muskie program. It's critically important because we feel that those numbers are really gonna be based on metrics in order to kind of keep tabs on the programs and how successful those programs are gonna be here in the state of Pennsylvania. So if you guys, like musky fishing and you guys are musky fishermen make sure you go out there and get that permit because we believe that's critically important to the future of the musky stocking program so that's one thing i wanted to mention the other thing i wanted to mention is the importance of musky zinc musky zinc really does contribute a lot of money to pa fish and boat every year specifically for the minnow fund for the muskies so that's another great thing that musky zinc does for PA Fish and Boat to kind of continue to benefit that program to support those muskies and that stocking effort. So I just want to give a quick shout out to Joel and Joe over at Chapter 16 and Jason over at the Nittany Chapter as well and really all the chapters across the state of Pennsylvania. Thank you, thank you, thank you for contributing to that minnow fund to kind of keep the minnows going and to kind of contribute to the stocking effort. It was really amazing seeing the difference, you know, hearing it on the podcast and then getting there today, seeing the process, seeing Jared, seeing how they do that with these fish. It was just really mind blowing. So really, I just want to say, if you guys like this video, go and hit that like button for me. If you guys like this content overall, please subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. So hopefully you guys found this beneficial. Hopefully you found it interesting. I just want to wish everybody tight lines and we will see you next time.